Hello everybody and welcome along to this video. This is Mr Johnson Teaches Macbeth Act 1 Scene 1, part of a series of videos I'm putting together with every play in the scene broken down and summarised so you can quickly revise and revisit those scenes. This is part of your English literature. This is paper one and section A. It is the first paper that you do for English. Therefore, really important that you get started on a good foot. So without any further ado, let's get going with this video. And just a reminder that this is the set that you would uh, you would see, or I should say the scene that you would see. This is the Globe Theatre, or the modern reproduction of how they believe Shakespeare's play's house would have looked. And this is just worth bearing in mind that the play that you are reading is not a book. It is a script that needs to be performed by actors. So everything you see would involve actors moving around on the stage and an audience there watching and listening. So while you may have seen a film version, while you've sat in a classroom and probably gone through it, just bear in mind that it is a script to be performed. And you would have had up to about 3,000 people in the Globe Theatre in uh, Shakespeare's day watching this play as well. So worth bearing that in mind. So what happens in this scene? <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is Act 1, Scene 1. It's the very beginning of the play. It starts off with three witches casting a spell. And they say how they're going to meet Macbeth after the battle, which we haven't really found out about yet. And they chant some ominous words before they leave the stage. It's a very short scene, and it won't take me long to go through it with you. But nevertheless, an important scene. Shakespeare has chosen to start with this scene. And he wants us to sort of imagine this horrible world, and he's setting it up. So at the very top there... It says a desert, it should be a deserted place, and there is thunder and lightning. So look at how that is pathetic fallacy instantly starting off the play, and it sets this dark and violent mood up. And then we've got the first witch, when shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain, she says. The second one says, when the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, hurly-burly is like chaos and confusion. And it already is starting, the witches are talking about things, but it's very confusing. What do they mean when the battle's lost and won? So these are double meanings, there's contradictions. What they say doesn't match up with what they're already saying. The battle can't be lost and won, can it? And what does that mean? The third witch, that'll be air, the set of sun, like near to the set of sun. Where the place upon the heath, there to meet with Macbeth. I come, Grey Malkin, Paddock calls. Now, Grey Malkin a Paddock. Grey Malkin is a cat, Paddock is a toad. Witches were believed to have um, like little, not mascots, but sort of companions that they had. Like they did their evil deeds with and they often were animals. So we've got cats and frogs there. The third witch says, Anon, like, I'll be there shortly. And together at the very bottom there, they all chant these words. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. So already again, we've got these double meanings. How can fair things be foul, like nasty, and nasty things be nice? So you've got this real mixture of ideas going on there. But they also just don't seem trustworthy. Already, Shakespeare's trying to set up for us that these characters cannot be trusted. What they say contradicts what they're saying. It goes against itself. And the fact that they're chanting at the end and they're using this rhyme, fair and air being those rhyming words, it almost does seem like this dark magic being set up and these spells. Exunt at the end means exit, off they go, and that is the end of that scene. It's literally a very short scene as you see there. Key themes already established in this scene were well, definitely the supernatural by having these witches on the stage, but also this idea of deception. To deceive someone is to try and trick them. So this idea of deception and duplicity is a lovely word to try and use when you're analysing Macbeth. Duplicity comes from the word duplicitous. It means two, like duplicate. So duplicity is when you've got two things going on at once. And it's a real theme that runs throughout the play and it's established in this very first scene. Some questions that I think you're worth having a go at and revising. They're quite hopefully quick ones. What method did Shakespeare use to set the mood? What do the witches say that shows they can't be trusted already? What are Grey Malkin and Paddock? And what does the rhyme at the end seem like? And all of those answers can be found if you re-watch this video. So... That is it from me and just leaves me time to say thanks for watching this one. There are more coming up and uh, good luck with your Macbeth revision and learning about it and uh, try and enjoy. Thanks very much. Goodbye.